<laughs> with Etherpad. Okay, so so we are live now. So hi everyone. Uh, sorry, we were doing some last minute verification with Blaine, and we wanted to share screens, but some somehow the Firefox gods uh, are not in our favors today. Uh, so hi Blaine, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Will. This has uh, been a great conference. Um, I've seen some uh, talks this morning that uh, are going to change my life. <laughs> I just can't wait to oh. you know, start applying some of the packages I've learned about. That's amazing. And it's only day one. We've got more of this coming <laughs> for day two. Exactly. So, Blaine, we haven't had, the, uh, haven't had a chance to tell you, but do you have the pad open on your end? Oh, let's see. Um, oh, I, yes, uh, because I asked you to close Firefox so you don't have it. Do you need the uh, URL, maybe? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I will put it into BBB, the chat right on your left. OK, I see it. So if I click on this and open a new window. Yes, don't worry about it. OK, so I have some questions. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, this is kind of so a question, but I'm curious. Do you have a favorite color theme? Um, so I, I do. I've been um, using a, a color theme that uh, is sort of light green. It's from the, uh, a, a set of themes that uh, Prot put together and made available this fall on uh, Melpa. And uh, um, in some of the slides, you'll see that I have this like uh, white background, but uh, I'm currently using a um, sort of a mint green color, <laughs> um, which I find actually has great contrast and um, I, I had to install some fonts that for the Mac to be able to use that theme, uh, but uh, Prot provides uh, detailed instructions, and it was very pretty easy to do. Okay, um, let's see. Um, uh, to your knowledge, are, so the second question is: uh, To your knowledge, are recent uh, coming security changes in Chrome going to impact browser extension? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I, uh, to be honest, I, I don't know. I'm not not aware of that issue because <laughs> uh, I ran and in, I installed some extension that I probably shouldn't have installed in Chrome a couple of weeks ago, and I've been getting pop up ads, and uh, so I, I switched to Firefox. <laughs> um, but so far, um, uh, I have used Ghost Text in uh, uh, a number of browsers. I can vouch that it works in Safari, Chrome. Um, uh, obviously Firefox, uh, Brave, and uh, and then amongst the Firefox family of browsers, there's uh, Waterfox and IceCat. It works in those two. So if Chrome's uh, security issues become a problem, then there are other browsers that for which maybe <laughs> that problem won't be an issue. Is this uh, a third question? Is uh, is this browser? Is this a browser agnostic, or do you have uh, to use Chrome? Um, uh, that's a good question. Um, so uh, obviously, I've, uh, as you've seen that, uh, or I've just heard, um, it, it works in a number of other browsers. There's probably a, at least 10 other browsers in which it will work. So there's sort of three families of extensions, uh, one for Safari, one for Firefox, and one for uh, Chrome. And often, the, one of those extensions will work in a, a a, a, a different uh, browser. Um, uh, you mentioned, uh, fourth question is, uh, you mentioned a couple other solutions to allow Emacs editing of text areas, uh, pointers. <laughs> um, well, uh, unfortunately, I didn't do my due diligence in researching those other solutions. I'm aware that there's something called Emacs Everywhere that's supposed to have a similar capability. But I, but I haven't uh, uh, dug into using it, so I can't uh, say anything about it. Um, I'll it's have fine. to say that, you to know uh, everything. <laughs> um, but, so because you're setting up a server from an editor and you have um, this extension in a browser, things don't always mesh. You may have um, you may have port four thousand one occupied by some other server from Emacs or another application. And so you have to, um, you know, sort that out. <laughs> that that can happen from time to time. I've had trouble with the the Emacs server sometimes uh, using that port, but I think you can redirect that uh, Emacs server to um, another port to avoid that issue. Um, 
that would be the greatest difficulty is just getting the two sides talking to each other through the web socket. But once that's uh, going, um, I, I use it every day and I've had, I, I'll go for weeks without any uh, issue. And, and then of course I'll be <laughs> changing something in my Emacs configuration where I'm turning on some new server that uh, fires up when I start Emacs and then I, I break it <laughs> or something along those lines. But uh, the sort of, you know, the great hazard of fiddling with your Emacs configuration. Um, a, uh, yeah just a hazard of being an Evax user. <laughs> Let's see. Why not save text? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if I... Oh, uh, let's see. So I have a fifth question, which is uh, why not save text from Emacs? Um, I would like to uh, hear some uh, you know, solution to the issue I ran into. So if I am editing a document, uh, on a, in a web browser and, and then via uh, Emacs, and I save that to a document on disk, then I, okay, that's great if that's, I'm not going to make any more changes, that everything's fine, that works great. But if I um, and then decide to make more changes in the browser, um, and then I try to save those changes, um, the copy on disk is out of sync with the copy in the browser, and I've had the connection break when I do that. So there, I, I heard that there might be a way of solving that problem. I'm, I'm not, um, but I'm, I have not implemented the solution. I forget what the suggestion was. Um, maybe somebody in the audience has an idea. Speaking of the audience, we have opened up the chat now. So if you want to join the current BBB room in which we are and ask questions directly to Blaine, feel free to do so. Otherwise, we're still taking questions on the pad as long as we have them. Although right now, I think we have answered all of them. Am I wrong, Blaine? Or did we answer all of them already? You're correct. We've answered all of them. Cool. So uh, we're going to still discuss for about two three minutes if people want to have add last question to the pad feel feel free to do so if you want to join us in bbb the link is at the top of the talk of blaine you go to emacs 2022 you know everything now we are at the end of the day and we can you can tell it's the end of the day because my accent is getting significantly frencher as a result <laughs> it's not getting any better since last year i think um yeah, I wish I could contribute, Blaine, more to your talk, but I feel like I'm way out of my league. I'm the guy who plays with Org on the side, and I tune into your talks every year, and I see molecules, and I see stuff that I can barely comprehend, and I, see, and I feel very humbled as a result. Well, I, I'm just trying to you know make my talks kind of unique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you are succeeding amazingly well. It reminds me, uh, have you been talking with John Kinchin or something? Because you seem to be uh, evolving in seminal fields in a way with Emacs. I have been, uh, I have been I'm a fan of his. <laughs> I, have right. been studying, I have installed Cymax and uh, his configuration for Emacs, and I have, uh, um, but, but I haven't, I've just started like, you know, poking around with it and, um, I've used his uh, configuration. I've got it up and running, and I have uh, I've used Ghost Text with it. Um, and uh, I was trying to like uh, tap into his uh, OrgRef <laughs> um, package, which is super powerful for managing uh, bibliographies. Um, yeah, yeah, he's very inspiring. I, I, he's I'm glad you feel very much inspired. Go on, please. Yeah, he, he's very he's very uh, amazing. He's very accomplished in Emacs and a uh, very accomplished teacher. And uh, he has now, as you probably know, a series of uh, uh, videos on YouTube that he's been putting together about uh, programming. So he's teaching um, students at uh, Carnegie Mellon University uh, how to program in Python use, via Emacs. And he has been sharing these videos on uh, YouTube. And they're like just 20 minute videos, kind of short snippets, but you can learn a lot from them. So it's really fantastic. It's an amazing journey, isn't it? You know, you start from a field that has nothing to do whatsoever with Emacs, and yet you find yourself so attracted to the idea of programming and making your workflow easier that you end up actually transitioning into a little bit of a programming role or teaching programming role. I mean, 
I was studying literature. I was all well and good in my English faculty. And then I decided to say, oh yeah, let's try Emacs. And 10 years later, I find myself spending more time working on Emacs than working on my liter literature papers. <laughs> well, my, my history is that I developed a, uh, a, ten, well, a dozen years ago, I started teaching students how to do molecular graphics. And then I developed, got into Python programming to develop tools to make it easier for them to use molecular graphics. And then that evolved into making these snippets available for a wide range of text editors that meant learning um, about, about, so I prepared these snippets for about 20 different text editors, leading ones. And of course, I saved for the end Emacs. <laughs> First, I went through Vim and, you know, the month of hell of uh, uh, rewiring your brain to do the Vim key bindings and then uh, then on to uh, Emacs, the, the, which I call the ultimate uh, text editor. And uh, because there, there is no other text editor beyond Emacs, it's the end of, end of the line. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I absolve you for your uh, herrings with Vim as a result of the last comment you just made. Uh, Actually, you know, no, I have no right of absolution. I cannot grant you absolution. You'll have to ask RMS tomorrow. <laughs> Well, uh, um, I spent a year, you know, in evil mode, but I, I switched about half a year ago to just Emacs key bindings. And <laughs> bye bye Vim. I mean, I use uh, Vim uh, when I log into like remote servers and have to uh, edit something really quick. But uh, um, I've probably have forgotten most of the key bindings. Um, there's only about a dozen you really need to know to get the essential work done. Um, so, but but yeah, it's been quite a journey. <laughs> Yeah. Very useful for about Right. So sorry for the interruption. We do have a one question, a very simple question about what was the key binding for Linux Firefox? Do you have it on top of your mind? Um so Linux Firefox. Um I'm not sure what they're referring to as well, which is why I, I threw you this curveball hoping that you would make sense for you. <laughs> yes. It's control shift H. Control shift H. I hope. Whoever asked this question on IC, I hope this answers your questions. Um, so I think control shift H, yes. Okay, well, Blaine, uh, I see some people have joined on BBB, but no one with a microphone still. I will chide you at the end. We are reaching the end of the day. We are reaching closing remarks, and I will be making a plea for more people to join with a microphone. Last year, we had pretty much the same setting. We were opening the room afterwards, and people were showing up with the microphones, and we had lovely discussions. And this year, it feels like everyone's a little shy. Shouldn't, you know, that's the, uh, the whole point is for you to talk and for us all to listen. Well, Blaine, uh, that was very insightful. Thank you so much for both the presentation and the question. Go on. We have a question in the um, uh, panel on the left and, and blue button. Right. Uh, so how long have I been using Emacs? Um, uh, I, I um, sort of got made a commitment to use it full time about uh, 18 months ago, maybe 20 months ago. Um, so <laughs> I'm a newbie. I'm still in the steep part of the learning curve. Yeah, uh, you just have to, okay, for providing context for the people, Blaine presented something at the last year's Emacs Conf, and it was as impressive as this year's presentation. And afterwards, he told us, oh, yeah, I've been using Emacs for six months or so. And that's where everyone's jaws dropped to the floor because, you know, some people have been using Emacs for 10 years, and we could even, couldn't even imagine doing this, some of the stuff you're doing with it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions? I think that's pretty much it. I'm not seeing anything appear on the other screen. Uh, I think we're pretty much good. Um, so, Blaine, uh, I'm not going to keep you any longer. We are probably going to bring this Q&A to a close. Thank you so much for all your answers. Uh, what are we going to do for the stream? Uh, we are still uh, We still have a talk going on on the dev channel currently. And then we'll be going to the closing remarks for the day at about 55 of the current hour. So we are going on a break for 20 to 25 minutes. So Blaine, sorry for keeping you hostage as I'm making the announcement, but it's the uh, best way for people to see my face as I do it. So okay, as result, thank you very much, Leo. Appreciate it. And thank you so much for all your time and all your answers. Uh, I will be closing BBB now, and we will put some music on and some announcement and see you at the top of the hour for the others or 55 uh, rather than top of the hour. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, Blaine.